Hey, welcome back to The Craft, where we explore what we're learning about the creative process. I'm Colby, and I'm here with my friend Carter, and today we're talking about artistic patience. There's a lot of ways we could go with this. Artistic patience, what does it mean? How do we cultivate it? Uh, And so maybe we'll kind of start out per usual with me throwing some sort of abstract idea around. Love it. Yeah. Kind of the first thing that my mind went to is this idea that art is long. There's a Henry Wadsworth Longfellow line in Psalm of Life. He says, art is long and time is fleeting. And this will kind of, we'll kind of circle back to this with the quote of the day. So spoiler alert, that's not it, but it's close. And this idea that the creative process just takes time. Like the other day I was, I was working on stanza and I had this kind of like, um, like desire to like just finish it. Like I just wanted it to be done. I like wanted to have it it written uh, in a way that it was almost like I wanted to, I don't know, skip a step and like mm-hmm. just have it done. Like have have the poem done. I just wanted to have it done. And it was just this moment of like you gotta just like you gotta slow down. You have to actually think. You have to actually work through these ideas. You have to work through this word mm-hmm. choice. And it was this kind of moment of like me wanting to finish it. But it wasn't done. And it's like, okay, like mm. it's a slow process. If you're going to make something meaningful, you know, oftentimes it's going to involve like a fermentation. Like it's got to like, yeah. it, there's got to be some sort of space and time to mull over things or chew on things, whatever metaphor we want to take. And that's just, it's, it's very much not a shortcut. So maybe, you know, a question for you, yeah. is there anything in like the music production process I can imagine you'll say there's something that you kind of want to skip, but you can't really skip. Like it's something that requires like this almost tenacious detail. Yeah. So super practical example from recently, I was working on a song for my friend, Will, and I had for a long time been hearing this one sound in there. Well, two things. One, I feel that definitely feel that on an emotional level of just like, I want this to be done. And then sort of like feeling that laziness, feeling sort of that sense of laziness, like, man, if I finish this right now, it's definitely not going to be the best it could be. Like, I feel like I'm rushing this. And I think that with that song, I kind of felt that at one point where I was just like, oh, let's get it done. Let's get it done. Let's, you know, okay, I'll get his feedback. I'll finish making those edits and we'll finish it. It's done. And then I've just like, he took some pressure off the deadlines and then I just kind of let the song sit for a while. And then I would come back when I got excited and I would like put in new layers, put in different sounds, swap out a sound that bothered me. And that leads me to my second point, which is that there's the hi-hat sound was like, I just, it, every time I listened to the song, I was like annoyed by it, which is a bad sign because like no magical transformation is <laughs> going to happen whenever the listener hears it where they love it. Like if yeah. I don't, if yeah. it's really annoying me, there's probably just something off. And so I went back, listened through a whole library of sounds, just like not, didn't take more than probably 15 minutes tops to just like play three or four different sounds and be like, hmm, this one sounds better, replaced it, turned it down a little bit, panned it a little bit differently. I think it was like on the left side and then I centered it. And then I was like, ah, okay, this feels better. And it's like just that practical example of like, if I had rushed to that and just accepted that thing that was really bothering me, I I hope it has some invisible effect on the song. And no one will really know because it's not like I'm going to A-B test, like which one do people like more? But, you know, it's like I think that, that just the fact that I can listen to that song probably and loop it a little bit more now and not feel annoyed by that sound says something good to me because that was the only sound that I can recall that had me kind of like feeling insecure for lack of a better word like yeah that sounds kind of cheap and then i changed it and i was like oh this sounds better this sounds quality and it was like 15 minutes of work but the patience of like ah this is getting that kind of that no over and over like no not yet no not yet is like a really frustrating like emotional place to be as an artist when you just sure. want a yes you just want to yeah. get to that like moment where you're like ah oh, it's done oh that's so good that's really good That's, I think that was really well put in that idea of you want to get there, but like, that's the process of like, like creative work is that 
like eliminating all those, that's not it, right? That's not quite it. That's not quite it. And if that's the process that that you kind of have to embrace. And like, there's like a active struggle to do creative work. Like it takes, I think we talked about this at one point. Um, like it's different than washing the dishes. Like there's, there's kind of this, you know, creative toll or whatever you want to call it of like, it requires something from you and it's not, it's not a, you know, click the button, order now, instant gratification. I can pick up my Chipotle order on the door. I don't have to wait in mm-hmm. line, right? It's it's not that. Like, you actually have to sit down and work through it. And, and that can be really tough, even if it's like 15 minutes. But, like, that's what it requires. And I think that was a great practical um, example right there of, hey, that was just part of the process. And, you know, you had to work through that. Yeah, definitely, man. I mean, so what do you think? There's kind of two big picture views of artistic patience. I think like this detailed nitty gritty piece and then this big zoomed out like patience for a long project and then even further zoomed out patience for the career, like accepting that there's seasons where you're putting out a lot and seasons where you're putting out very little and the ups and downs there. How do you think through so, sort of like those two bigger picture perspectives of patience? That's really good. One of those things I think we've we've talked about before is like trying to have a long term picture and kind of how that can be helpful in the day to day. And so it's not like they're completely disconnected. You're absolutely right, and I think this is a worthwhile distinction that we do have. You know, the micro patience in the details and, and this kind of bigger picture. But it's interesting to think about how how we understand the biggest like kind of framework is influencing how we deal like day to day. I think one of the things that helps me is, you know, if I'm hoping, Lord willing, right, to have a whatever 50 year plus career, what yeah. I do on Tuesday, while it absolutely matters, it doesn't make and break <laughs> the big picture, right? It's it's about that consistency. It's about that, you know, showing up, that 1%, that Kaizen, you know, however you want to frame it. But the weight of this day and this project gets kind of reorientated. And so I think if we adopt this kind of long-term patience of, hey, you know, I'm going to do what I need to be doing. I'm going to try to push myself. I'm going to try to do excellent work. I'm going to try to continue to grow within my craft, right? If that's our mindset, then we kind of don't have to get too concerned with this specific project, this specific paper, this specific, you know, you fill in the blank. It's not all or nothing in that way. And I think it's kind of freeing. I think it's freeing in a way that we can kind of embrace that idea that art is long. That, hey, you know, I I will hopefully be a much better writer at 45 than I am now, right? I mean, the idea of growth, and I think it just, it's helpful when you're patient on the the big picture, because I think that helps us navigate the day to day. That's something I think I've you know we've talked yeah. about that before. But what do you think? Yeah, man, that's so good. You've you've talked to me about that before, but even just hearing it repeated again is like this is a good word for my soul. It's like you don't have to put all these pressures on not even just today, but like you don't even have to put pressure on one song or one project because you could bomb that project and then you can make another one. And I think sometimes like I get so that project becomes this like mountain or wall in front of me. And so my eyes can't see over it to the other side to say, Oh, there's another album out there. There's another song. So maybe this one is, this, is this long Valley and it's really hard and really just, dis- depressing but maybe something better is on the other side and so it's just a great perspective to like zoom out and see like man you can just keep i mean emmanuel said this i've probably quoted him on this before but it's like he's like i'm gonna keep coming up with new ideas like i'm the well with the ideas here you know and so i don't have to put all this pressure on like monetizing this one project or making huge success as this other one like there's just something yeah. valuable in like letting go of stuff like you've said and not being so precious about everything but just making stuff and letting it 
letting it out into the world and just seeing what happens. And even just the fact that me and you, like practical example, like whenever we've kind of put out a couple different podcast projects and then deleted them, scrapped them completely, we're like, let's start over and then let's start over again. It's like, you can just keep making new things and try and, and that was just like, those were not super heavy projects we poured a lot into, but sure. we still did something there. And and then we were able to just hit reset. And there's been a lot of growth because of that. So, And that was part yeah, of our process great- too. I yeah, mean, We're here at The Craft and we both, I think, are really excited about this iteration, right? Right. This has After been- like three or four different titles and concepts and like topics we were going to talk about, it was all leading up to this. So it's exciting. Yeah, exactly. And so there's like, there's a patience in that too. And I love your metaphor, the mountain range, because yeah, we can get fixated not only on a single mountain, but a single tree, right? (laughs) Use the old forestry metaphor. And like, Mm -hmm. there's, yeah, there's other projects, there's other ideas. Yeah. I think it's a great metaphor. I love that, man. So do you have kind of any more thoughts like this was your topic idea so i'm curious if there's anything else that you wanted to talk about or stories or examples from like maybe how are you walking through patience right now Mm. or not walking through it you know yeah that's good dude one of the things i was thinking about and this kind of relates to you know how we reconcile micro and macro patience here um our view of art being long also influences our goals, like from short-term goals to long-term goals. And I think this is a really helpful mindset. It seems like to me, most of the you know meaningful things that we're working on, you know, relationships in life, craft is one of them, they're long-term goals, right? There's something that happens over time. Or short-term goals, right? You know, a lot of times those like backfire or like short circuit or they're short sighted, right? I trade my birthright for this pot of red, red stuff or, you know, the passage that we have in the Old Testament. Is it that's Jacob and Esau? Yeah, right. It's short term, short term. And so, like, long term thinking, like, it changes the way that we approach work. Yes, but it also changes what goals we have because those things that take time, those are the valuable things. Like, those are the that they're valuable because they require something valuable from you. So I, I, I don't like, know. I just think that's yeah, like, like it's such a healthy. I don't know. For me, it's like yes, I keep and even like keep eternity on your eyes. That's like that's the kind of Christian way of yeah. Things are they come in a different light in the light of eternity. Same sort of long term, right? That's the ultimate long term thinking. Yeah, I think we all can find value from that long-term perspective and zooming out and just a lot of what I know both of us value is just that uh, things that will come slowly. I mean, even I, an example I thought of was just like building wealth. Like there's a lot of, you know, I think people, a lot of different people talk about, and it's even a, even a proverb of just like money that you earn, you know, everyone knows like if you win the lottery, a lot of people lose that money or even, other kind of super lucrative jobs people might get. If you get a lot of money fast, a lot of people lose that money because they don't know how to invest it and how to maintain it. They just blow it all. But like wealth gained slowly over time is like, seem like not that I have done that, but like it seems to be the, the healthy method of building like on a solid foundation. And so, yeah, I think that's just another example of how in each of these areas, craft, relationships, finances, faith, all these topics are, there's a consistency of like lifelong and not just these, but there's a lot of pressure to like do things fast. Absolutely. And and also just a lot of comparison for me that can happen looking at people around me, same age, younger, five, 10 years younger than me who are blowing up and making a ton of money or getting a lot of success critically or whatever. And it's like, dang, you know, that just can be super discouraging whenever you're not taking that long-term perspective on, on your craft, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, to quote Colby Shim, comparison's a bad game, <laughs> but it's so, I, I, that one always sticks out in my mind. That's, that's right from you, but it's true, right? I mean, there's, I think those pressures are real and bigger, better now, not later. And that's, 
dude, that is the commodity culture we live in, I think, big time. I mean, even like environmental issues, these sort mm. of things, right? What we don't need is more short-term solutions, right? That's a place that demands a long-term ecological kind of perspective, or at least in my mind. But it, yeah. it's all about, man, are we looking for short-term? Are we looking for long-term? Yeah. yeah. 100%. I love that, man. What do you think are some... Oh, I, real quick, last thing for me on this. I wrote down a couple examples that have hit me or that I've heard recently of people kind of exercising this artistic patience. I thought it'd be cool to kind of share a couple of stories because that always inspires me. So I'll just fire these off real quick if that's cool. So the first one is from the from Imagine Dragons. Their lead singer was working on the song Thunder, you know, Thunder, feel the thunder. That song, they were working on that. And he was like, he said in an interview that like it was the bane of his existence for three months. And, you know, that's not the longest period of time, but it's significant to consider finishing a song. And I think they'd had the song mostly finished, but it was just kind of like not to the level of quality that he wanted. And so he he kept waiting and it didn't sound like a fun process, but he kept waiting. One night he wakes up at 3 a.m. with this idea to wrap up the end of the song. And I think that it's the part where at the end of the song, if you go listen to it, the last 10 seconds, he's got this really crazy, I'm not going to try to do it, this crazy like ad lib vocal, like singing. And then it turns into this kind of like really cool, like growly, just gritty voice at the end. And it's just got all this emotion in it, super raw. And it's this melody that came to him at three in the morning. And uh, it's just, it just was kind of like one of those examples of how patience and also just kind of waiting (laughs) at times, like can lead to the idea that takes the song to the next level or finishes the the book or the, the story or whatever project you're on. So good, dude. They, yeah, that's a story that kind of prompted this episode. That was on Song Maps. If you haven't subscribed oh, yeah, yeah. to Song Maps, go check out Song Maps. And yeah, that was a story that's like, yeah, okay, that took waiting, like you said. It just mm-hmm. it took time. It took time. Yeah, that's a great story. Next up, I'll be a little faster on these because they're just more like facts. But I believe that Pharrell waited seven years to release Happy. And that song blew up and it had such like success and so i just think that that's crazy because i don't i don't have more of the story than that that's just like my low resolution knowledge of it but i think that's pretty insane to think about having a song that good and just waiting for seven so years because it was like it was perfect not timing. ready and and then he si- assigns it to the right you know right uh movie and gets the right deal and like it's just kind of crazy to think Cause sometimes I can be t- so like make something and I want to get it out, make something I want to get out. But like, what, what about just waiting and like maybe letting it sit? Yeah. I think that, that that's an inspiring story. Last one I'll share is Leonardo da Vinci held on to the Mona Lisa for years. And I believe he may have pushed past his deadline for the patron who like paid for that piece of art or commissioned that piece of art. Um, and I don't remember the details and I'm reading through his biography from Walter Isaacson, but haven't gotten to this. I just heard it on a podcast, but essentially he held the Mona Lisa for years and years. And if you look closely at it, you can see how many layers of paint went over top of it. He just kept adding tiny little brushstrokes for years, years and years. When I read in another book today about the painting too, that there's even stencils and like, or uh, sketches and drawings underneath the paint that, so there's so many layers under the Mona Lisa it didn't just like, he didn't just like sit down in a month and just crank out this thing at the height of his career. It was like a super slow drawn out project and then goes on to become, I think the most famous painting in history. Like pretty incredible. Yeah. Dude, a couple great anecdotes there all about, yeah, patience, patience in the project. I guess the takeaway is if you're patient, you might just make the next Mona Lisa. <laughs> Ooh, quotable. We'll see. Nice, man. Well, can you bring us home with some application? What do you think? Yeah, I had something, again, pretty pretty simple. This is kind of similar to what I said last episode about like identifying it. Again, I think trying to identify those moments of friction, that that moment where you're like, oh, man, I you know, there's this compulsion to 
get it over, you know, get it done. And which is not, yeah, right. We want to have momentum in that way, but try to think about those, you know, what could use patience? Is it in a project? Is it thinking kind of more, you know, big long term? You know, is it a paradigm shift for you? Or is it just something that's, you know, embracing something that's a process? It's a process in your craft. You can't speed it up. Maybe it's not the most exhilarating part of what you're doing, but how can you kind of cultivate a patience in that moment of friction? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I like that. Cultivate patience in the friction. Yeah, that's good. It's it's way easier said than done because it's. I think those are the moments where you kind of are hitting that mental, like, I'm not getting any dopamine. Like, this is not fun. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. your brain is conditioned and like struggles to push through those moments. Yes. And sometimes I do feel like the, even that Imagine Dragon story, it's like sometimes stepping away too in those and like letting it breathe. For sure. Letting it get cold and then going back in with fresh eyes too. hundred percent. Absolutely. Cue the music. Cause it's quote of the day time. The quote of the day is from Hippocrates, so you might be familiar with the Hippocratic Oath, same same dude, same Greek. It's from one of his books, and the beginning of the book, the Latin translation is Vita Brevis Ars Longa, uh, and the translation of that is, life is short and art is long. And one of the cool aspects about this quote is the Greek word for art is techne, and techne... Um, translates as craft or technique or skill. And so it's really interesting to think about the context of this quote of, you know, Hippocrates talking about doctors and talking about the technique, the craft, the skill of being a doctor as this thing that takes time to develop. And then also the great juxtaposition here of life is short, right? Life is short and Art is long, and there's that kind of even tension with that, right? We, we live a, a brief life, and these things that are valuable take time. And I just thought mm-hmm. it was a really beautiful uh, kind of pithy statement here. Again, reiterating, right, the techniques that you're, we're hoping to cultivate. You know, Colby and I, you know, these are things that take time. They take time. And, even, you know, for, for centuries, you know— artists, creatives, uh, professionals, right, have been recognizing that, hey, this takes time to develop. So I thought that was a really cool quote. That's great. And it's it's just like cool to think too that art can last a long time and last beyond a lifetime too, you know, and there's oh, kind of that's that aspect good. to it as well because, I mean, just even the writings and the paintings of, you know, I almost said Pharrell because it's on my nose here. Da Vinci and uh, and uh, Michelangelo. Yeah, I think it's another good, big, important one. The lasting effect of these yeah. art and how they build over time, right? You're, yeah. When you create, you're creating in a network and a genealogy of creatives, which is really cool. Yeah, I like that. That's good, man. This has been great. Thanks and we're on time. This topic. And we've this is our first episode probably that's under 30, unless we just dive into something else right now. But this has been great, man. I love it. Any final words? Nope, that's it. All right. I don't know how to end these. We this is the part of the show we need to probably tighten up just to <laughs> yeah, yeah. just a tiny bit. Just but a wee bit. If you have any feedback or suggestions <laughs> about how we could do this part better, send us an email at haycraftpodcast at gmail.com. We'll read and respond to everyone. You guys have a great day, night, whatever time it is in your location. Talk to you in the next episode. Hey, thanks for listening to The Craft with Carter and Colby, where we share what we're learning about the creative process. If you're a writer, music producer, marketer, filmmaker, photographer, or you just love creativity, then this show is for you. Our cover art was designed by Elizabeth Newell. You can learn more about her work at elizabethnewelldesign.com. That's Elizabeth, N-E-W-E-L-L, design.com. And you can follow her on Instagram at Elizabeth is a designer. If you like the show, there's three things you can do to help us out. First, subscribe so you learn when we post new episodes. Second, send the link to one of your friends who you think would enjoy the show. Uh, Really, word of mouth is going to be the the number one way we grow the show in any way. And three, if you have a topic you want us to cover, 
or feedback about how we can improve the show or comments on what we've said, you can respond to heycraftpodcast at gmail.com, H-E-Y-C-R-A-F-T podcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.